Man, the two, uh, two verses of that um, song I really love. And in, I've been stacking up the years trading punches with the enemy. And all my fears like Jericho Wall has got to come down, come down. I think we can all relate to, to uh, trading punches with the enemy. And I think we all can relate with putting up walls to um, hide or uh, uh, help with our fears. I'm Billy Oiler, one of the uh, pastors here. And before we get this um, message started, I'd like to thank um, yeah, I only did this a hundred times. Um, I, I'd like to thank our church family for uh, their prayers and reaching out to uh, Kathy and I last week. Um, it meant a lot, um, a whole lot. Um, to us, and um, she's here. She's doing uh, really well. Um, she had her last uh, test Friday, which means um, we got some good news, and she can drive. So there's no more jokes of um, driving Miss Daisy, uh, Miss Kathy. So, so um, it's all good, and we love our church family, and thank you very much. Okay, how many of you guys have no fear and can just jump out and take a step of faith. Like riding a brand new 20 story roller coaster that uh, hasn't been tested yet. Or how about for the single guys, um, asking that girl out that you thought was way out of your, uh, your league. Uh, I got one, go into ministry, it'll be fun they said. Um, I know that two of my daughters this year have stepped out in faith. Um, one, her and her husband went to Denver and um, for vacation, came back, sold everything they had in Atlanta and moved to Denver. Um, and then my, our youngest daughter um, took a step of faith and moved to Atlanta for a three-month job and um, had her car broken into twice, window smashed. So, um, I, but uh, I like seeing them taking uh, steps of faith and um, going and do what their passion is. There's a million ways we can take a leap of faith. There's a, um, and some of the leaps of faith are good and some are not so good. When I, think of, when I think of people in the Bible who took a leap of faith, I think of the uh, disciples. They were just average guys working, doing their thing to survive like most of us today. Well, one disciple sticks out to me, and that's Peter. Peter got to walk on water. That is, until he lost his focus. It's easy for us to lose our focus on Jesus. And when Peter did, he sank like a rock. But we'll, go, we'll, we'll come back to keeping our focus on Jesus in a minute, if I can keep my focus. Peter was a fisherman, and one day, while he was casting his net with his brother Andrew, Jesus came walking by and got their attention by saying this, and he said to them, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Immediately, they left their nets and followed him. So they dropped their nets and followed Jesus. That was a big step of faith both Peter and Andrew took. But this is the same Peter who would deny knowing, uh, uh, knowing Jesus as uh, he was led off to be crucified. But after I'm raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter answered him, that they all fall away because of you, I will never fall away. Jesus said to him, truly, I tell you this, this very night before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, even if I must die with you, I will not deny you. And all the disciples said the same. Not only did Peter deny knowing Jesus, but all the disciples did also. Stepping out in faith will test you straight down to your core. Just imagine spending three years with Jesus, and when you're, you're tested the way Peter was tested, and you would deny knowing Jesus. But this is the same Peter that Jesus said this about. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock, I will build my church 
and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Jesus had asked his disciples who they thought he was. For some thought he was John the Baptist, some Elijah, others would say he was Jeremiah or just one of the prophets. But Peter answered, you are the son of man. Peter got it. Peter went from being praised praised by Jesus to deny knowing Jesus. We would not be sitting here today if not a handful of men and women stepped out in faith and started Atlee Church 26 years ago. Talking about highs and lows and everything in between, Atlee's seen it all. As I think back through my life, there have been times when I took a step of faith and there were times when I knew I should have take, take, taken a step of faith, but did not. And I think back on those times and think, what did I miss that God had in store for me if I'd just taken that step of faith? Our lack of faith and trust in God can get in our way of taking steps that he wants us to make. For, for me, my last step of faith was 10 minutes ago when I came out on the stage. Um, Ed had to push me. No, nah, not really. Lord knows I like making a fool out of myself. I mean, just uh, a few weeks ago, Jeff and Trey had this great idea of, of uh, dressing Trey and I up in cowboy and horse costumes. So um, all I can say is um, taking a step of faith is good. Uh, now, nah, my, my biggest step of faith was years ago when I went into ministry, two years ago when I went into ministry here at Atlee. And I can tell you it's been one of the best steps in faith I have ever taken. And I hate to think if, if I had not been obedient to the calling God was calling me to do. But I got to ask you, what is God asking you to step out in faith in right now? Really think about it. What has been on your heart lately? What have you been wrestling with? When was the last time you stepped out in faith? Let's look at three, three steps on how we can step out in faith. Step one, we need a word from God. What word is God putting on your heart? What is he saying to you? You know, we can look back at Peter and see that his word, word was, come, Peter. He said, come. So Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water and came to Jesus. All P Peter needed to hear was, Peter, come, step out, of the, step out in the water and walk to me. Then Peter lost his focus and sank. We must stay, keep our focus on Jesus. For my word was obedient. God was telling me, just be obedient to what he was putting on my heart. I love to look back at my journals and see just how God was working in my life then and um, how I was um, fighting him. Um, but eventually, it took um, a, a year and a half, and I uh, stepped out in faith and um, I hate to think if I had not stepped out in faith um, where I'd be at right now. Um, I know that most of us hate to step out in faith and not know where we're going to land, but we have to walk by faith. We have to walk by faith. Here are some ways we can learn to walk by faith. Open up your Bible and read God's word. One of my favorite verses comes from 2 Corinthians 5, 7. For we walk by faith and not by sight. For we walk by faith and not by sight. We cannot see how things are going to turn out when we take a step of faith. That's why building our faith in God is so important. Open up the Bible and learn what God has to say about faith. If you turn to the back of your Bible, to the, to the concordance, and look up faith, there's 36 verses. 
that you can look up and read what God has to say about faith. Here's another way of building your faith. Get into a community of believers. Join a small group. Give us some friends that are walking in their faith and, and have them help you walk in yours. God did not create us to do life alone. Here in three weeks, we're going to start our, uh, our, our fall small group, group um, session. You can go, like Trey was saying, you can go to our website or our church app and find a group that's right for you time and day. Here's the last way. Take time to hear that word that God is asking you to do right now. What word is God putting on your heart? Slow down and hear what he's trying to tell you. Then act on it. Step two. Take that step. Just take that step. That's right. Just step out and do it. Look, if you're waiting for the right time, there's never going to be a right time. Because if you're like me, you can think of every excuse under the sun not to do it. My excuse is, was I was 56 years old, had a great job, just cruising along. Um, but God would not leave me alone with being obedient to what he was telling me, what he was putting on my heart. But you got to make sure that God is speaking to you. Talk to a trusted believer. Maybe it's a person in your small group. Maybe it's a family member. Maybe it's your wife, your husband, friend. Make sure that that word is coming from God. Talk to one of us here at church. Just get the word and walk in faith and trust God to lead you. Then just take a deep breath and take a, t take a step of faith. Step three, keep stepping. That's right. Just keep stepping. Don't look back. Keep moving. Don't stop. This is where our focus on Jesus is so important. It's critical. Let's go back to Peter for a second and look what happened when he stopped focusing on, on Jesus and he started focusing on himself. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and took hold of him, saying to him, Oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? Why do we doubt? Why do you and I doubt? It's because we take our focus off Jesus and put it on ourselves. Listen, we, we can't do a thing that God wants us to do if we focus on ourselves, there's no, it, it'll fail. It's, it's uh, just not gonna uh, work. Here's a few things to help you keep focused on Jesus. Read your Bible daily. If you have a cell phone, you have a Bible. There's probably 40 apps with the, with the Bible that you can download. Um, if you don't have a Bible and need a Bible, we have information tables set up. Um, stop by after, uh, after the service and uh, pick one up. Um, reading, get in, getting into God's Word is life-changing. It's, life, it's, it's been life-changing for me and, and, and millions of others. Get connected in a small group. Lean on them and let, and let them lean on you. I can't say enough about small groups and I'm I am and I'm not plugging small groups but I, I can I can just tell you what uh, what difference um, that it's made in in my life uh, doing life with the guys that I do small group with spend time in prayer find that quiet time and it could be in the morning noon uh, night before you go to bed uh, when you're driving to work, when you're driving home, it's probably a good idea to pray on, on the way to work and the way home. It might keep you from having a road rage and telling the person next to you that they're number one. But um, 
Find that time. Find that time and pray. Going back to the song that the band played earlier, we're going to trade punches with the enemy. Some of us have been, some of us have been taken to our knees by punches thrown by the enemy. But this is, this is not how God wants us to live. We've got to tear down the walls, trusting in Jesus and walking in faith. So as we close today, let me ask you, what is the word that God is whispering to you right now? We can't wait for the right time. That time will never come. What step of faith are you needing to take right now? Let me ask you this. Have you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior? If you haven't and you want to take that step, pray this prayer with me. Bow our heads. Heavenly Father, forgive me of my sins. Make me brand new. I believe Jesus died for me and rose again so I can live for you. Fill me with your spirit so I can know and serve you and follow you for the rest of my life. My life is not my own today. I give it to you. And I thank you for this new life. If you've prayed this prayer, bow, um, heads bowed and eyes closed, if you just raise your hand and let us know that you've accepted Jesus today. We ask this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Here's three questions that I want to leave with you today. Take a look at them this week and really, uh, really dive into them. What is the word that God is speaking to you right now? What is holding you back from taking a step of faith? And if you stepped out in faith and have stopped stepping, what is taking your focus off Jesus? Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, Lord, uh, we uh, come to you. Uh, we uh, thank you. We thank you for, um, for putting those words on our heart. We thank you for everything that you do for us. And I just pray, Lord, that, that, that we'd all have strength and courage to find that word, to spend time with you, and then take that step of faith. Lord, we love you, and we lift this prayer to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Y'all have a great weekend.